Hello fellow engineers and welcome to another tutorial for Space Engineers on Xbox. And today, we're going to be looking at different mining alternatives rather than just sitting back and using your drill all the time. Because this thing is loud and uh, it's very annoying to pick items up off the ground. So we're going to be showing two different options that you can use for mining. One is sort of like automation one and a half, like 1.5, you're still drilling, but you don't have to pick anything up anymore. And all you have to do is just move it back to your base. Where the other version, version two, is full on automated drilling where we're gonna get the base to mine its own resources. And so let's get into it. Oh God, I'm falling into my hole. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is the one half version first. What that version is going to use is a block called collectors. And what a collector does is it will pick up any floating little material that is in the world if it gets close to its entrance. So for example, if I just drill a little bit here and we can see that there are these little blocks, these little rocks of stone like there's a little bit of five stone there and wherever this one went went all the way down here 60 stone there now as you can see they had gravity and they had physics so they rolled down the hill we're going to exploit that by placing a collector somewhere where we can mine uphill from it and just let all of the little balls of ore roll downhill and into the collector now you can do this in a couple different ways. You could actually just say, slap a collector on the side of the base here and dig out a trench and dig out a way for it to work right off of your base, right where it is now. Unfortunately, it looks like the areas beside my base are this particular hill right here is a, is a little too shallow of a, an angle. I need a little bit steeper of an angle. So something, Something like this is a good hill to do this collector method on. So I am actually going to make a little mobile, little mobile base, a connect, uh, what'll it be? A, it'll be a cargo container, a collector, and a wind turbine that I can place down in the world, mine a whole bunch, and then just transfer the materials back to base manually. Uh, Let's get to it. So, first thing to note here is if I press in my left stick again and try to go back to collector in gas and logistics at the top left, I can't. I don't have it unlocked yet. What I actually need to do is unlock conveyors first. So I just need to build a conveyor and just just get, just get her going here. So let me do that, unlock everything, and I'll be right back once I have all the materials available and ready to go. Okay, building up the conveyor junction here, and boom, you've unlocked new blocks, and that's all I needed you for. So we'll grind you down and use you later. So in the blocks here, we can go three right triggers over to collector, and we can take a look at the collector. You can see on one side of it, there is sort of this funnel. That is where any of these loose items rolling along will get sucked into. And on the other side is a conveyor port, which then you can attach to a conveyor system or any other items that uh, you want to have it conveyed into. So what I'm thinking is that we'll use a collector. We'll press X here to add it to our build planner. We're also going to need a wind turbine to power this thing because this is going to be separate from our base. And we're going to go over to gas and logistics and find a small cargo container as well so that we have a place to store these items. So we're going to go with those three items here. Then we'll go over to our inventory, left bumper, and press the inventory button, and those were all placed into production. Now, I, I can get these started by going and placing a few items to begin with, and you can see that the collector here, in its bottom right, 
It has a list of materials it needs, but steel plate is the first one on the list. That means it needs a steel plate for me to have at least one of these in inventory in order to place it. Now you can see it's green. I could actually start the placement of the collector. So with that knowledge in mind, we have some steel plate now. I can go and walk off here, find a good hill, which this looks like a nice and steep hill. Yeah, right here will be perfect. Then I can maneuver around this collector. I want to place it such that it's facing up the hill. So I'll stand on the, the, the ridge here. And I'll just maneuver this and first maneuver it to the hill and then switch my orientation by pressing down on the D-pad until I got the bar that allows me to aim it up the hill a little bit. And I'll just nicely sink it in ever so slightly into the voxel. Once it's in the voxel, it'll be acting as a station and therefore will be static and won't move. And I'll place it. So it's just barely within the voxel and it is nice and static and pointing up the hill where we need it. Excellent. So now we can press in the left stick, go and find our small cargo container, and we can place one behind it. And we can go and find left stick and find our wind turbine, and we can place one on top of there. Now this wind turbine won't be making much power because it's really close to the ground. However, that's okay. This is going to hardly need any power. We just need a tiny bit to run the collector. But now I've got all those in there. I should be able to fly back over to my storage compartment here. And all of the resources that I need should be ready to go. So all components successfully withdrawn. And now I can fly on back down here and build these guys up. Excellent. And there it is online and working. If we take a look at the control panel here, we can see the wind turbine is only making 187 as its max output, where the ones up on our tower are making 300 something. So wind clearance is poor, but we only needed two kilowatts, just enough to access the system and use it. We don't need anything more than that because we're not running any production or anything on here. So now, what you can do is uphill from the collector, go uphill, and mine out some stuff, and your little item should roll down and, oh no, we missed the collector. We're going to have to uh, compensate for that. So, if I can grab this thing before it rolls away, leave not any resources behind. We can go to our armor, grab our armor shapes, rotate through our different armor shapes to find these slopes. So first we're going to need to place a block on either side of this, and then we can place a slope on either side, angling things into our collector. And we don't actually have to build those up because they're just physics objects already, so they work just fine. I don't have to spend all the time and resources to build those. And now, if something was going to miss, it should hit that and get sucked into the collector. So we just come uphill from the collector, right around here, and we just start mining away. Things should roll down the hill, get sucked up by the collector, and deposited in our cargo container. <laughs> How easy is that? So now, you just just mine your way up the hill. You just mine out the hill. Keep in mind to not get any sort of local pockets. Like, say if one section I drilled a little bit too deep, the would make enough of a flat area that the resources could stop and they wouldn't get sucked up by the collector. So then I just need to sort of mine a trough back to the collector. After you've mined out an entire area, you've done all you need, you can come on back down to your cargo pod, pull all the resources out of it, 
and you may take a, f a couple trips up here, but you can fly up to your base and deposit it back in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then you're just, that's it, you're done. You've not had to stare at the ground anymore and hold X and dance around to pick up a whole bunch of stones. And with this, I can then grow, grab my grinder, grind it down to get all the resources back, and then go somewhere else, place it back down, and do it again. So say I find a particular nice ridge line that I want to rip apart. I can just place this back down there, rip it apart, pick it all back up, fly up, and deposit it back into my uh, resources. And there you go. Now, that's just to get rid of the staring at the ground and picking up everything. But we're still drilling. And drilling sucks because it's really loud and it's really annoying. So we don't want to do that anymore. What we want to do is have the base build for us. So we are going to set up a piston and drill combo. Now, we're going to press down on our left stick here to get into our build menu. And we're going to go over to... Oh, what is it in? It is Advanced Systems. We're going advanced, boys. And on the left side here, there is pistons. Pistons are wonderful, and I'm going to be using them so much. Pistons and rotors are your two ways to move things on your grids. Rotors, of course, spin them, and pistons move them in and out. So let's grab some piston here to put it into our selection. So you can see, if I move the piston out there the the green bounding box which is it's it's uh it's it's hit box is strangely large at the top oh that's weird it, it i can't place it unless i have extra room on the top of it that is because that is where the piston portion is going to come out so i'm going to go to my cargo container here because there is a conveyor port on the top and if we look, there's a conveyor port on the bottom of these. Uh, it might get in the way of my... That thing. I might have to move that radio... Uh, that Not radio, my, that wind turbine. But that is okay. We can cope with that. And we'll place down a piston. And, ooh, performance issues. The game doesn't like pistons sometimes. It, uh, the game doesn't like it when you have things that move around. Uh, let me just move this... Uh, to the other side okay that's moved we have our piston placed here we'll build it up in a second but what we're going to do with our piston is this piston is going to go up and down and what we're wanting to do is it to carry a drill that is going to be stuck off the side of it such that the drill can go into the ground and we're actually going to combo this with another piston because we're just going to go crazy but in order to do that, what we're going to need is conveyors. They're thankfully on my recent blocks here. So I'm going to grab them out. And I am going to conveyor over a few blocks into the area here. So pressing up, I'm going to change over till I get a conveyor tube with a corner. I'm going to place a tube corner down. Then I'm going to change over to straight tube. I'll go a couple over in order to give me a little bit of uh, clearance here. And then tube straight down. Then I'm going to put another piston on the bottom of that, pointing downwards. So now we have a piston pointing upwards, going over, and then piston pointing downwards so when this piston is fully extended and that piston is fully retracted will be sort of the highest that it can go and when this piston is fully re retracted and this piston is fully extended it'll be the lowest it can go so I'm gonna build this up we're gonna set the pistons that way and then we're gonna add in a drill or two and see how that goes so let me get this uh, all built up here all right and uh, all put together so you can see that it is green across the top uh, if it's not green for you you're more than likely missed the fact that the piston 
and the piston top part is separate. So you're going to have to make sure that those are built um, as well. And you're going to have to make sure those are on your build planner for when you uh, order resources. But now we can add a drill to this. So we're going to go into our menu here. We're going to find under... Where would it be? It's probably under weapons and tools. Yes. Here we go. Wheels and weapons. Bottom right. And then we can cycle through the blocks into this group to get drill. And drill is unlocked for us. Then we'll press right button to confirm. And we can see that it's a... Hmm, it's a chonker of a drill. It's huge. It's got... Rotate around here. It's got conveyor ports on all sides except for its drill bit. But unfortunately, if I try to place it here, it's red. Ah, it's because it's sticking into the voxel and it doesn't like that. So I need to come over here and extend out this guy, this control panel. If you go to the individual blocks control panel, then just press X, it'll go directly to that particular block in your control panel, which is very useful. So then I can just say reverse, and the piston will start extending. And at some point while the piston is extending, it should be far enough away, right there, and I can be able to place the thing. I'll just let it extend out, as that is fine. Then I can go in, add that to my build planner, and mm, we're not, not able to withdraw all the components, so I'll put the components into production. And we'll get that drill built up. The idea being is what we'll be able to do is we'll turn on that drill, retract this one, it'll start to drill, and then we'll extend the other one and it'll drill a nice deep borehole and gather out a bunch of resources. Once we're done punching down the deep borehole, we'll be able to say add more drills to this or even add more pistons to this or add some rotors to this in order for it to drill an even larger area, which we'll get done in the future episodes here. But for now, we'll just need a few more moments here. And we should, oh, accidentally put things in production again. That is fine, we'll need them eventually. Still getting used to the left and right button, whichever one it is. But once this drill is online, say goodbye to mining out stuff by hand, as this will make our life absolutely beautiful. Ugh. Alright, so now we're going to head into our menu here, go to our control panel, and find our drill in the left side menu. We're going to turn it on. We can see the drill starting to spin there. Now, you may notice something. All of these items have the same color of text, but this piston and this drill are different. That is because they're on different subgroups. So if we take a look, if I just look through here with my gun sight so I can show you what I'm talking about, this base is the main grid of the base. This piston is attached to the main grid. However, its rotor top part is denoting the section between one grid and another grid. This is how the game keeps track of it. This is a subgrid. This and this piston. These four conveyors, that top part and that piston, are subgrid one then this top part and this uh, this drill are subgrid two and when you're looking at your thing here you can tell which are on subgrids because they're on different colors when you dock a uh, a ship to your base everything that's on that ship will have one color to it so you can tell what's on that ship so i can tell that this piston is the one at the base and this piston is the one on the arm so this piston, the one at the base, is the one I want to do first. So we are going to reverse that. And we're going to slowly move this drill into the ground while it is spinning. Now you may need to slow this down, but I think the 0.5 should be enough for us. 
It's not too fast here. And once this gets to the ground, it's going to start drilling away at the terrain. And we can already hear our refinery going to town as it is taking care of the ground, putting into our refinery, and we're getting those resources. Now that that one is fully retracted, I'm going to send this piston forward. So we know it's the piston that has the color to it. And instead of doing 0.5, I'm just going to manually move it over here so it is a, a little bit slower, maybe 0.2, 0.1 would be good. Just slowly move into the terrain here. Give it lots of time so that it makes sure it mines out everything. And we can come over and see that our inventory, our basic refinery, is getting stone into it and is processing it. So now, by doing nothing, by just standing back here and watching, I am slowly getting extra stone and I'm slowly getting more resources. And I think I can speed this up a little bit. Maybe point one was a little too slow. We'll go point two in a bit. There, that's good. And just look at it. Look at its beauty. And this will extend out till three times this length. So that is like two and a bit blocks long. So it'll go six blocks deep before it runs out of extension with this piston. And now it's got through the dirt and it's actually hit the stone. We can hear that the refinery is going full bore there and has thousands of stone in it. Look at the amount of stone this thing is getting. And if we take a look, our cargo container even has more in it. All in just a matter of seconds. Just snap your fingers and you have a bunch of stone. However, we've dug out the depth of this, this piston. It's not going to go any deeper. So we can head on into our control panel. We can turn our drill off as we are done with it. We can retract our piston from the drill hole. We can take this other piston and extend it out to raise the whole contraption up. And what we can do from here is extend this. We can just continue to add pistons and drills to this in order to make our system larger and larger. But we're going to go over that in the next episode, making a full-on rotating drill rig here to mine out a borehole. Oh, probably about, if I was to circle it, maybe about yay big, all the way practically down to that thing, and just bore an entire big ass hole into the ground. And that should give us enough resources that we will be able to build practically anything we need in the future. But we have our first retractable mining drill, and if you needed it because you're using non-maxed out world settings, we have our, our semi-automatic mining collection using gravity. But that is going to be it for this episode. Next episode, we are going to go over making this drill borehole so much bigger and better and just getting all the resources. But for now, thanks for watching and good hunting out there, fellow space engineers.